Today's topic is Meniere's disease. So in this video, we will discuss all the possible MCQs relating this condition. Other name for Meniere's disease is endolymphatic hydrops. So this is basically a disease of membranous labyrinth. On the other hand, autosclerosis is a condition of bony labyrinth. So remember M4 Meniere's disease, M4 it is membranous labyrinth. In India, this disease is common in M4 Mahila. It is common in females. So what could be the cause? What could be the cause of this condition? It can occur because of cochlear homeostasis disba disbalance. So cochlear homeostasis is disbalance. As a result, what you will see, you will notice there is increased fluid accumulation. There is increased fluid accumulation. So it can occur due to many reasons. This disbalance in cochlear homeostasis can occur due to many reasons. Like it may occur due to allergies. It may occur due to autoimmunity it may occur due to viral cause it can occur after trauma or it can occur due to small vestibule aqueduct small vestibule aqueduct in some individuals it may precipitate by excess cold drinks excess soda containing beverages tea coffee smoking chili or spicy food and sometimes it is also stress induced so these are some of the causes of Meniere's disease. How it will present? So there is an American Academy of Auto Laryngology and Head and Neck Surgery. They gave certain features for Meniere's disease. So what are these clinical features? These clinical features will include the patient will have episodic vertigo. Episodic vertigo means this vertigo will last for more than 20 minutes. This unilateral SNHL and this SNHL is fluctuating in nature. There is tinnitus and earfulness. Tinnitus, earfulness. These four features we call them typical features. These are typical features of inner disease. There are some atypical features. This atypical features include this placusis handbird sign, very important. and birth sign Tulia phenomena Tulia phenomena so what is this placusis these three I'll come to this these three are known as atypical features and what these are these are typical features Typical features. This placusis is distortion in pitch perception. Handbird sign. Handbird sign is a false positive fistula sign. This false positive fistula sign it occurred due to abnormal band formation between atrial and saccules. Tullius phenomena. It is a noise induced vertigo. 
इट इज अ नॉइस इंड्यूस वर्टिगो टू मेक द डायग्नोसिस वी शुड हैव फोर दिस वी कॉल दिस फोर प्लस थ्री मीन्स फोर टिपिकल फीचर्स और एंड थ्री ए टिपिकल फीचर्स तो रिमेंबर फोर टिपिकल फीचर्स वर्टिगो एस एन एच एल टेनाइटस एयरफुलनेस एंड थ्री ए टिपिकल फीचर्स दिस ए टिपिकल फीचर्स आर ऑलवेज आस दज एम सी क्यूज दीज आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज इन एग्जाम सो हाउ टू मेक द डायग्नोसिस हाउ टू मेक द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ दिस कंडीशन टू मेक द डायग्नोसिस वट वी कैन डू वी कैन डू बहरा इन बहरा वॉट यू विल नोटिस देर विल बी इंट्रा ऑरल वेव फाइव लेटेंसी डिफरेंस इज रिड्यूस मीन्स दिस वेव फाइव लेटेंसी इज रिड्यूस्ड वट एल्स वी कैन डू वी कैन डू पी टी ए विथ स्पीच डिस्क्रिमिनेशन स्कोर स्पीच डिस्क्रिमिनेशन स्कोर so what you will notice in this pt in this pt we will see snhl pay attention it is snhl not chl and in speech discrimination score this score will be low what else we can do we can do electrocochleography electrocochleography in this electrocochleography we will measure a ratio this ratio is Subnetting potential upon action potential. Subnetting potential upon action potential. Normally it is point three. This ratio is normally point three. In case of Meniere's disease, it is more than point four. It is more than point four. This is important in case of Meniere's disease. What about subnetting potential? is to action potential ratio it is more than 0.4 so how you are going to treat the condition the drug of choice is beta histine beta histine is considered the drug of choice for meniere's disease what else patient counseling patient counseling is important diuretics we can use loop diuretics like furosemide torsemide we can use this drug cinerazine cinerazine is a calcium channel blocker and it is also acting as labyrinth sedative it is labyrinthine sedative what else the last resort what we have for medical management of this condition is steroids so other modalities of treatment there is a device this device is known as manet device manet device manet device what it is it is a low pressure pulse therapy so manet device will give nothing it's a type of auditory physiotherapy so you may get an image based question from manet device the last thing is what we can do is surgical management or surgery so what are the possible surgeries in case of this condition so we can do four type of surgery first is sac decompression sac decompression sac decompression we can remove the labyrinth that is labyrinthectomy what else we can do sacculotomy sacculotomy the sacculotomy is very important procedure the important procedure we do here it is named as cody tack fix procedure cody tag fix procedure 
and we can give intratympanic we can also give intratympanic steroids like dexamethasone betamethasone or intratympanic we can also give gentamicin intratympanic gentamicin so this is like important topic for exam very very important topic usually they ask one question from this topic Meniere's disease Meniere's disease endolymphatic high drops disease of mammary labyrinth in India it is more common in females the cause is due to this disbalance in cocktail homeostasis clinical features four typical features four typical features that is vertigo, SNHL, tinnitus, earfulness and three atypical features dysplacusis, handbird signs, tulia phenomena for diagnosis we can do BERA, PTA, electrocochleography and drug of choice for Meniere's disease is beta stain. this is important we can use loop diuretics and we can use labyrinth sedative like synrazine Manet device it's a kind of auditory physiotherapy surgeries sac decompression choreographic pro procedure and we can use intratympanic gentamicin this question also asked in exam intratympanic gentamicin thank you so much